Now I changed my hat, not anymore as an um, education scientist, now I become lecturer um, in economics, business and economic subjects. Um, Hackfest as a tool to lecture innovation. I came to that topic because innovation is really crucial everywhere, you will then see further on. But there is not one university really knowing how to lecture innovation. But of course, this is a wide range from entrepreneurship to maybe a Hackfest can be an uh, element, but seeing Hackfest as the tool, um, this is quite new. Um, I will um, here evaluate more or less that what I have seen um, during the e-research Hackfest in Ethiopia, but also that what I have learned from literature so far. And then at the end, I try to elaborate if um, Hackfest, uh, the, the methodology of Hackfest could be used as, um, as a tool to lecture innovation. Innovation me, uh, brings me all time to Josef Schumpeter, and uh, Josef Schumpeter was talking about the um, creative destruction. This was the main term, what he has found. Based on that, we have, to, uh, have seen in literature quite a, a lot of approaches. Maybe uh, you have heard about the blue ocean strategy and the red ocean strategy. All this goes back to the uh, creative uh, destruction. Um, the term innovation, Schumpeter um, first published in um, 1942. And here he uh, um, refers to the competition of new commodity, new technology, new source of supply, new type of organization, and so on. Competition, which commands a decisive cost and quality advantage. This is quite clear what is innovation. And he also sees the three phases, and this is now to clarify that invention is not innovation. Invention is just um, generating an idea. Implementation of these ideas, then we can talk about uh, innovation, and then we have the dissemination of the innovation in the last uh, step. Innovation, why we, we need in innovation? Industry needs innovation to stay in the market. This is clear. We need new products. Uh, but governments become very obsessed about uh, innovation. They empower universities and uh, research centers to work on innovation. And all that is because of economic growth. Uh, government see the economic growth in innovation. We have to have new products. We have to stay in the market. We need economic growth. Therefore, we need innovation. We need good ideas. We have to invent ideas and implement these ideas. That then we can talk about innovation. But from where innovation comes? Primarily, we see that innovation uh, is based on practical experience. We see also innovation comes from inside uh, enterprises. And Schumpeter is talking about the uh, dynamic entrepreneur and uh, sees the dynamic entrepreneur as the agent of innovation. So now back to the lecture room. This we don't find in the classroom, these conditions. Uh, the topic of innovation is then brought to the universities of applied sciences. They focus on innovation. And students are trained in lectures and laboratories to become scouts of innovation. But what they are doing, this is an invention because they are not with a company. That means they need the company support to implement the good ideas that it becomes an innovation. Or in incubation centers or somewhere. And uh, the race of um, innovative ideas uh, should not be seen of I, uh, as a coincidence. That means in, uh, innovation is not a coincidence. It not just happens. We can also approach in a structured way. And this structured way we see primarily then in open science, in working with data. Um, and uh, this 
uh, set up quite a few other um, um, important um, preconditions that we can talk about innovation. But what is the current situation? We have in Europe, we have the digital agenda, uh, which pushes uh, research to databases. But if people, our researchers, are not statisticians, they have difficulties with databases. How to work with that? Data mining and data digging becomes a preliminary work for researchers because we, we don't know is it worthwhile to invest money, is it worthwhile to elaborate a proposal if we don't see what we can get out of that. Where is the shortcoming? What does the market need? Where we can work, um, uh, or where we, to, to what topic we can bring our research. NRANS provides uh, universities access uh, to high-speed internet. Uh, students, um, they, are, they have the laptops, tablets, and smartphones. That means they are quite independent learner in that way. Uh, the databases um, requires structure. Here is uh, already the first challenge, what we see here if we talk about innovation. Um, databases um, require structure that it will become valuable for researchers' work. Then students have uh, to get introduced how to use databases, to have access to database, to organize uh, big data. And then what we see until now, there is no methodological approach, um, how um, this could be lectured, or how lecturers could then accommodate this data digging and data mining into their research work or their, their lecture work towards innovation. The question now, the driving question is, could Hackfest uh, hackathons and mashups be used as teaching and learning tools to find uh, innovative ideas along the research way. First of all, definition of hackathons and, and hackfest, but uh, I think uh, we have uh, heard this yesterday from, from Roberto. This is very much in line with that. Uh, but I want to, to go back to the 1960s, to MIT. Um, and there, they had the first hackers. And at that time, hacker was not something negative. It was quite uh, uh, a positive term, a progressive term. And uh, these hackers from the 1960s at MIT, they brought up uh, ethics. And in literature, we still find this ethics, this hacker ethics, until today. And uh, um, these are, I think, six points. And first of all, they say access to computers and anything that might teach you something about the way uh, the world works should be unlimited and total. Always yield to the hands-on imperative. All information should be free. Mistrust authority. Promote decentralization. Hackers should be uh, judged by their hacking not beggars uh, criteria such as degrees, age, uh, race, or position. You can create art and beauty on a computer. Computers can change your life for the better. This is quite often quoted. Um, we can agree or not agree, but um, I would not uh, bring this in, in into my lectures as such, uh, because uh, the lectures I would like to have a different focus. Very often we see um, hackathons, hackfest also combined with uh, mashups. And uh, mashups, uh, here I take the term from um, Technopedia, is a um, technique by which a website or web application uh, uses data presentation or functionalities from two or more sources to create a new source <coughs> to mash up. Um, subsequently, we come to, the, the, to that, that Hackfest, Hackathons, as well as mashups are informal events organized to push creativity at the maximum. Experts and IT people get together in teams and find uh, IT-based solutions for current problems. Every participant 
uh, has its own device. The organizers just provide the location and the ID infrastructure. This, is, this goes back more or less to the 60s, 1960s, when they started working on that. That means no money is needed. They have everything. We just need a room where we can gather. And we need, yeah, nowadays, we need internet that we can work on that. Uh, some statistics. Statistics for hackathons and hackfest are rare, but I got some here, uh, some data from 2011. Here we have uh, 200 hackfests um, or hackathons um, in the United States, and then 2016, a huge increase. We have 3,450 hackathons, public hackathons, and internal hackathons in uh, companies in 100 plus countries. And 75% of hackathons have been uh, public uh, hackathons. And uh, who is participating in that? Um, students, interns uh, with their primary skills, uh, professionals, of course, professional students and interns uh, with their primary uh, skills in web, mobile, and hardware. And uh, how many participants we had? 200,000 plus. And prototypes. But uh, at the end, they come out with the prototypes of uh, products, uh, of apps, uh, 13,000 plus. That means it's quite something. Um, then um, in, in literature, we also find uh, hackathons. Uh, um, the focus of hackathons is primarily on software uh, development. And they, um, they then categorize the different uh, software development, but I would just take the first one, the, the cutting edge research projects reflect the hacker's code of ethics. That means being in for something new, not taking something what is already available, no mesh ups, but going through um, cutting edge research projects. This is what hackers want to see and real hackers, and they will be proud of that. Who are the, the participants normally, the, the characteristics of uh, the, the participants? We find quite a lot um, here in the structure. And uh, it's very difficult nowadays. To say, uh, we don't want to see the consultants in. We don't want to see the coaches in. And we don't want to see the recruiters in. Because these people participate in the hackathons just to find uh, smart brains. They want to recruit new uh, employees or they want to get the product, the prototype, what they develop, and they then commercialize the prototype. Uh, coming to the point, uh, Hackathon, Hackfest as pedagogical tool. And uh, there, I found some literature on that. Um, and so here, um, it is, hackathons are described as a structured interaction devoted to project-based learning that uh, requires students to self-organize and to develop meaningful projects uh, through structured communication. Further on, for what purpose um, here the, um, the hackathons and hackfests are used? First of all, to kick off a course benchmark students, to identify personal learning and um, learning objectives for each student, feedback course uh, expectations and outcomes, to generate uh, project ideas, to compare alternative approaches, uh, to scale down projects, uh, to increase um, the overall class performance, to get uh, uh, to know their classmates in the relaxed atmosphere. And I have to say, this does not satisfy me uh, in the way what I have seen from Hackfest, uh, from the Saigaya Hackfest. This, I, I would not use the Hackfest really as a tool to lecture innovation. Uh, here uh, now I refer to, to the Hackfest from Addis Abeba. And uh, just in brief, I don't go through the details. I think uh, Roberto is the better source to, to inform me about the details. Um, first of all, participants uh, post their application together with a use case. They submitted the use case, and this use case is then or has to be peer-reviewed. Researchers of selected cases 
have been then invited to the Hackfest to work uh, in close cooperation with the Saikai team um, at a bilateral level. And uh, the project outcome is researchers' work that will be either implemented uh, at his her home institution or it will be used then for his own research work. Um, would Saigaya approach fit to education for would be the Saigaya approach fit for um, educational purpose? If we see the objective, if we see the selection of uh, participants, if we see the teaching and learning methodology, and if we see the syllabus. We see lecturers and trainers, they are more or less, this is now the, the first very different approach, they are not any more lecturers, they are very much coaches. And then we have the assessment approach, and this is also very different from all the other lectures, because here we have um, four types of assessment. First of all, the working approach. We see then the presentation of the result. We see the usefulness of the project, and we see the execution as such. The execution, documentation, and uh, judging by the jury are those who will use uh, later on the interface. That means this is already very uh, competence-based assessment. And we have to say it's everything in what what are the requirements, what are the guidelines for a course uh, at the university level. In conclusion now, in future um, it will not be sufficient if, uh, lecture, uh, if researchers and uh, if researchers are good in their subject and, and managers just manage the resources they have to manage, they, everyone needs to focus on innovation and here comes how can I focus on innovation if I have no resources available, no budget available, or just uh, in certain limits? Um, then we have in Europe the European Open Science Cloud, and uh, this is not uh, just for fun. Uh, this has been developed for purpose, and I think um, everyone should take advantage of that, and if we see the the, the researchers, if we see the, the, the students as the future managers, they should know how to use um, the European Open Science Cloud and maybe later on the African Open Science Cloud. And we have heard today already about the African Open Research Cloud. Uh, we have to get ready to work with big data and the big data or working with big data requires coding and decoding skills. That means here we have really to, to bring that to the curriculum or at least to incorporate this in certain um, syllabi that, uh, this, that students really learn to use data, to work with big data. And hackathons and hackfests uh, as presented on the web are non-structured approaches. Um, on how to create innovative ideas. That means, according to the literature, I would not say uh, this is an educational tool, but uh, um, the Saigaya approach for the Hackfest definitely fulfills the requirement for um, becoming a course in a formal uh, education uh, environment. And here we of course, uh, based to the strategy or methodology, it's used uh, or it's useful for ha for um, a block event that's uh, not uh, two hours every week, but to have it in block that uh, students can work on that uh, and will not be disturbed by other lectures. Um, this, the Hackfest um, <coughs> built on the cognitive domains. That means classroom lectures very often they are on the lower level of uh, uh, the um, of Bloom's taxonomy. That means uh, it's more the knowledge, uh, the comprehension. But the Hackfest now builds on on the higher level of the cognitive domain. That means analysis, synthesis, and evaluation, and um, allow to describe the objectives, activities, methodology and uh, the evaluation process in a syllabus. 
uh, teaching and learning methodology are set out based on the cognitive domains as problem solving and research oriented methodology. Subject for assessment is the result achieved by the students. And, and yeah, and, and the competence, students' competence. Uh, working with big data is seen in, uh, in the Hackfest, in the Sakaya Hackfest, as the starting point for innovation. 